Is that Hasbro customer services? Yes. Yes, I'm looking for some help on how I can find Earthrise Thrust to complete my Seeker collection. Do as the squid head says, man. You know, Transformers Earthrise Thrust. My name is Thrust! T-H-R-U-S-T! Is that so difficult to remember? What do you mean, USA only? There is no need to get yourself all worked up. How am I supposed to complete my Seeker collection? I mean, my parents told me it was really hard to get hold of the other Seekers, and now you're telling me that Thrust is not available at all? You are a freak. That's just not very nice, especially at Christmas time. You must excuse my men's conduct, they're just a little giddy of So 2020's been a tough year for everyone, and we all know the reasons why. And I think as fans, we've had to deal with a lot this year. Distribution issues, exclusive issues, QC issues. But at the same time, we've also had to deal with the fact that Hasbro have been pumping out some fantastic product. I mean, have we ever had a time when we've had this many well-updated Generation 1 figures? I can't remember another time. And so things are starting to get a little bit wound up towards the end of the year. I can see that on the forums and on the social media, so on and so forth. But... Has it become too broken? Is it at the point of no return? I'll leave that for you to decide. What I would like to say is that there is definitely a huge divide between Hasbro and the fans. But in my opinion, it's nothing new. This has been a problem for 35 years and so much so that I actually wrote my dissertation on building a platform to bridge the gap between Hasbro and their major target audience market, you know, which is us, the, the big fan base, the people who spend thousands of pounds every year on Transformers. And the same old issues are happening year and year over. We see issues with distribution. We see issues with retailers. We see issues with products not being available that we want. And prioritization uh, of the wrong people, shall we say. So I'd like to talk a little bit about my time at Hasbro. When I was there, 2005 to 2008. I did just under two years there in two stints. One as a student, as a placement and one as a contractor. Obviously, I didn't work directly on the Transformers brand or anything like that, I worked in IT, but you know, I noticed a lot. I got involved with a lot of the marketing, who are the people who run the show up there. You know, there's no sales team. It is marketing who decide which product is coming. It is marketing who talk to the states. It is marketing who actually get to a say in you know, which, which items in the line they'd like to pick up, how many of them, so on and so forth. And that's from a Hasbro UK perspective, of course. And at the same time, they liaise with the US team who, who run everything, basically. If Hasbro US say you're getting a product, you're getting that product. If it's maybe overstock from the US, it may not be. If Hasbro US say you're not getting a product, you're not getting that product. Simple as that. And that's where the likes of Kapow and In Demand and all the other independent family-run businesses have come to our aid in the last 12 months to help us with all these ridiculous exclusives where we've all been working so hard, almost as a second job for some of us to try and obtain the figures that we want. The ridiculousness of having exclusives five out of the six seekers you know, the fiasco that was Blue Streak. And let's not even get started on the Quinson Pit of Judgment. But these problems come round 
time and time again. And it's uh, the same old story, actually, with the um, problems with Hasbro getting leaks and getting their product out to these YouTube reviewers who are able to do leaked reviews of product that shouldn't even be announced yet. Uh, it seems to be a vicious circle in that they learn from their mistakes and a couple of years later it all starts again. So, you know, what, what, what is the major flaw? I'm going to take you back to 2005 when I first started working at Hasbro. Now remember, we we're in the middle of the Unicron trilogies at this time. It wasn't a particularly great era for Transformers. It was good to see product on the shelves. It was good to see vehicles that turned into robots. But in the context of things, let's be honest, if I look back over the last 35 years of Transformers lore and history and, and cartoons and toy, it definitely wasn't the best time for me. I don't know how you all feel about that way in. Um, so things were things were going along and we had our CEO provide their what they call the town hall announcement at Hasbro. Being an American company, every quarter they would do an announcement from the CEO to showcase how the company's doing, what the product is that's bouncing at that time, you know, what the future looked like and so on and so forth. And I remember my first town hall meeting. Um, Brian Goldner was not the CEO at the time. It was still Michael Hassenfeld, I think his name was. Um, and uh, he gave the overview and they went through all the brands and they talked about My Little Pony. They talked about the Monopoly brand and about the board game side of things and Action Man or whatever you want to call him, G.I. Joe, which was their number one brand. Always was Hasbro's number one brand. It was their baby. They were going to look after that brand no matter what. And they came to talk about Transformers too. They called it a seedling brand. They said it was something that they were growing from the ground up. It was a small offering. And I scoffed at that time because I thought to myself, this brand which you guys built in the 80s, you know, which you imported from Japan, which you put a fantastic wrapper around in the cartoon and movie series, which you actually invested some effort in in the mid to late 80s, which made you so much money. You're now calling a seedling brand. You're now treating it like below My Little Pony or whatever. And, and that irked me seriously. And more practices as I worked in the company irked me too. To the extent that uh, at the time I was relatively prominent on social media. I was um, part of the Transformers at the Moon forum, if anybody remembers that. I know Phil's still around on TFUK. And um, yeah, basically I went on there to vent my feelings, to showcase how things were working at Hasbro UK and how it was impacting on us, the fans and the, the, the sales market, if you like. And what happened is, in my naivety, you know, being a, a, an 18 or 19, how old was I, 21 year old or whatever kid, I, um, I did this at work um, on a work computer and got caught and got a serious stern talking to for voicing my opinions in a public medium uh, where I did not agree with how Hasbro were doing things, distribution and product selection and, you know, ideas basically for the future, how they were running the show. And, um, you know, I, I didn't get fired or anything like that, but it did change the way in which they viewed me. It changed the way in which the brand manager for Transformers at that time viewed me and they, and they shut me out. However, roll forward another six to nine months and the announcement of Spielberg and Bay coming on board to do a major movie was enough to bring on board a new marketing director for Transformers in the UK. And she was far more open to me than the previous brand manager. She included me in virtually everything. She got me uh, the ability to voice my, you know, ideas, to, to come to sales meetings, to the buyers, to to talk about all things uh, Transformers. And 
things started to change a little bit. We saw some improvement in terms of the way in which things were working internally, even if the product wasn't fantastic, let's be honest. You know, um, the first movie was all right. The, uh, um, some of the dialogue was a bit cheesy, some of the, the, the tags and so on and so forth. And it got worse and worse as we went down the line. The toy line really wasn't for me. Um, I got I got a bit out of it because I was, you know, promoting and I was actually attending auto assembly at that time was the convention of choice in the UK and and doing a stand of my own for Hasbro for the first couple of years and then after that I did my own stand anyway, and uh, and things changed but ultimately it seems that we've gone backwards to that time where. You know, people were looking for Armada Wheeljack on the shelves and they couldn't get him. And we were in the situation where right now we're looking for product. And, and COVID's had a massive impact, right? But let's not take anything away from that. There was a huge delay in Wave 2 and Wave 3 hitting the shelves. We know that Hasbro works on a January to December kind of time scale. They try to get their product out there every year in the first couple of months on the shelves and they run sort of the four waves if you like i'm going to talk about deluxe waves really because they're the mainstay of the line for generations anyway and uh you know it was one of those where we didn't know, nobody knew what was going to happen and so they've had to cancel a wave they've had to rejig things they've had to keep up with their timeline and part of it makes sense because you know they're making laying the the groundworks for what's coming in the future who knows whether or not it will be next year or the year after we start to see the next movie or beast wars or whatever uh but ultimately it's going to be um a, a, we know that it's it's a short packed year it's been condensed and things have been rushed out of the door at the last minute and there've been major qc issues and and things have been shifted to pre-orders and to exclusives which are just nigh on difficult for the majority of us to obtain unless you don't have a job or unless you earn a million pounds a year it's just been ridiculous so in some ways i feel like they could have done it a lot better they knew what they were doing with the haslab unicron they had a proper uh, crowdsourced scheme for that they could have done that for so much of earthrise I know it's small potatoes in comparison price-wise. I know it's hard work and I know it's changing their mindset because ultimately the Hasbro are a bit of a dinosaur. They do things in the old ways and they haven't changed in, in the 15 years since I left. Well, since I started there, the 13 years since I left there. And I can't see it changing any time in the, in the near future. If COVID hasn't taught them by now, that they need to change the way in which they work for next year, for the forthcoming years. Uh, I can't see how it's going to improve anytime soon. And I think that's epitomized by the fact that I tried to reach out to people at Hasbro that I knew when I was working there, who are now in much more senior positions to try to use some influence to, to get somewhere with the fans in the UK, to bring them some relief from uh, what has been a bit of a hellish year for us you know obviously the issues with the world and then if you add on top of that the issues with stress from being at home and, and the situation and and this little pocket of relief that we get from having fantastic toys that we can re rely upon and combine that with brexit and the fact that it's going to become more difficult to import uh, other figures from china and other countries uh, you know it's it's all coming to a head if you like and so, you know, I, I tried to try and make things better. And ultimately, I used examples. I went with logical business rationale. I went with, you know, sheer aggression at Tasbro. And basically, they shrugged me to the side and said, you know, that's great. But we, we really, yeah, we don't care. Or we're not interested. Or we appreciate what you're saying. But... Yeah, we're not going to respond to you. We're not going to give you anything. We're not going to you know, make any changes. We are going to say we're making changes, just like they have done for the last 30 years, as I've posted up on many places. But it is what it is. So that's my mini rant about Hasbro versus the fans. Things need to change. They need to change pretty rapidly if they don't want to become a dinosaur like Toys R Us 
like uh, mother care like um, all the other high street chains that have disappeared in the in the previous years Woolworths another great one that was a stalwart for Hasbro products transformers in the past and yeah we have to bear with it unfortunately we're stuck in the middle we want these great products and some of them are really fantastic some of them have issues mainly QEC issues and some of them are not being produced that we would like and we're not having our voices heard but we are where we are and you know on a positive note they are trying to do more G1 they are trying to do more Beast Wars it does look like uh, a new movie will be coming and uh, hopefully will spark some new interest what will we see in the future who knows if generation one has been done to death for another five years or so what will they do will they do something new will they try something like they did with armada when they put so much effort into it and failed so dismally in my opinion um it'd be good for them to try although it would be nice if they tried something different rather than just reinventing the wheel with new characters and new toys and everything else the same same setting same people same same environment but let's see what happens and in the meantime all we can say is stay strong stay together the community is what makes us great and we need to showcase that and we need to keep that going strong so this has been Rohan apologies it's been a bit of a solemn video this week but I think it was needed and hopefully we can have a better 2021 I've already started placing my pre-orders get yours in now and get all those figures that we all love and want. Take care, back to the guys, see you next week. You're getting worse! So much worse! It hurts! It hurts me physically! <gasps>